is um, well, introduce yourself to the group and talk to the group and fill them in about what's happening. I know everything, but they don't. You have to speak to them. Don't speak to me. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Um, so, dear devotees, uh, this is Satyabhama Devi Dasi from uh, London. And uh, uh, yesterday we have <clears throat> and discussed uh, a day before yesterday actually on uh, Wednesday we have um, uh, discussed that uh, Srimad Bhagavatam verse 10.9.19 and uh, uh, today we'll be discussing 10 point uh, Guru Maharaj will be talking about 10.9.20 so I'll be sharing my screen soon just give me a minute well, so 10.9 what are you you're just giving numbers tell them about the program come on what are we doing oh. So program, um, uh, we, have, we have been discussing about the Damodar Leela at the moment and um, uh, uh, because there's a Kartik month going basically, so uh, we are discussing the Yashoda, uh, Yashoda Damodar's pastime and uh, uh, this is this will continue for some time till we finish this chapter, I guess. Uh, and uh, uh, once we have, uh, Guru Maharaj has uh, talked about the particular words, then there will be <clears throat> a chance for devotees to, um, you know, ask the questions or uh, discuss the realizations or comment on the uh, to topic and um, uh, yeah so this will be the uh, agenda for the class basically <laughs> i'm sorry i don't know what else you want me to that's good enough <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> i have shared the uh, verse oh sorry this is the wrong one yeah, it's you and the audience. I don't have, you don't talk to me at all. It's just you. Okay, I can see my screen. Yeah, okay. They're the ones that are listening. You don't have to talk to me. Okay, good one. Okay, um, I have a Srimati, are you there? Yes, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance as always to Shail Prabhupada. I have an announcement for an upcoming program that I need to uh, uh, inform you about. And yes, um, I'll do that at the end of the program. So remind me if it slips my mind. Sure, Guru Maharaj, thank you. Yeah, okay, good, thank you. All right, Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 9, 20, continuation of the Dhammadar Leela. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Nimam Virincho Nabavo Samsraya. Usadam Levere Gopi Yatat Prapta Vimukti Dat. Translation Neither Lord Brahma nor Lord Shiva. We actually did this verse, didn't we? Um, uh... I was informed this was the verse for today, Guru Maharaj. So I'm not sure. Let me just go see. back and check. Let me, let me see. Go back to the previous verse and let me see the previous verse. Uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, we finished only until 19, Guru Maharaj. Uh, today, okay. we'll the verse 20. Yeah, that, okay. Number 20 is correct. Okay. Neither Lord Brahma nor Shiva nor the goddess of fortune, who was always the better half of the Supreme Lord, can obtain from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Deliverer from this material world, such mercy as received by Mother Yasoda. I'll read it again. Neither Lord Brahma, nor Lord Shiva, nor even the Goddess of Fortune, who is always the better half of the Supreme Lord, can obtain from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Deliverer from this material world, such mercy as received by Mother Soda. Srila Prabhupada's purport. 
This is a comparative study between Mother Yasoda and the other devotees of the Lord. And as stated in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila from the fifth chapter, Ekala Ishwa Krishna Asabrahmritya. The only Supreme Master is Krishna and all others are his servants. Krishna has the transcendental quality of Vritya Vasyata becoming subordinate to his vritya or servant. Now, although everyone is vritya, and although Krishna has the quality of becoming subordinate to his vritya, the position of Mother Yasoda is the greatest. Lord Brahma is, is vritya, the servant of Krishna, and he is Adikavi, the original creator of this universe, Tene Brahma Yada and Adikavi Ye. Nonetheless, even he could not obtain such mercy as Mother Yasoda. As for Lord Shiva, he is the topmost Vaishnav, Vaishnavanam Yata Shambhu. But to speak of Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, the goddess of fortune Lakshmi, is the Lord's constant companion and service, since she always associates with his body. But even she could not get such mercy. Therefore, Maharaj Pariksha was surprised, thinking, what did Mother Yasoda and Nanda Maharaj do in their previous lives by which they got such great opportunity? The opportunity to be the affectionate father and mother of Krishna. In this verse, there are three negative pronounce, pronouncements. Na, na, na. When anything is uttered three times, do it, do it, do it. One should understand that this is meant to indicate great stress on the fact. In this verse, we find na libere, na libere, na libere. Yet Mother Yasoda is the supreme exalted position, and thus Krishna has become completely subordinate to her. So with, and then they will tell you when you're getting it, so it will be easier for you. The word yeah, vimukti dot is also it. significant. There are different types of liberation, such as yusuhudya, salokya, sarupya, sarstri, and samipya. <laughs> vimukti means special mukti. When after a liberation, one is situated in a platform of prema bhakti, one is said to have achieved the mukti, special mukti. Therefore, the word na is mentioned. That exalted platform of prema is described by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as prema pumarka mahan. And Mother Yasoda naturally acts in such an exalted position of love and affairs. She is therefore a nitya siddha devotee and expansion of Krishna's love and potency. His potency to enjoy transcendental bliss through expansions who are special devotees, Ananda Chin Maya Rasa Patita Bita B. Such devotees are not Sadhana Siddha. Amagyan Timiram Dasya Gena Jana Salaka Chaksun Militam Yang. Don't move it, don't move it. Plus my Sri Guru Vena Maha. Shri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stapitam Yena Bhutala Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Padati Swam Padantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve O Ramani Vajarine Nivrasai Sasunya Vari Pastyatya De Satarine Vancha kalpa taru vischa, kripa sindhu vei vicha, patitanam bhavane vyo, vaishnave vyo, namaho namaha, jai sri krishna chaitanya karu nityananda, sri advaita gadadhar sivasari gaur vakta vinda, hare krishna, hare krishna, krishna krishna, hare hare, hare rama, hare rama, rama rama, hare hare. So we're getting a nice comparison here between what is called Vritya. Vritya means, well, the body of the Lord in this case. That Vritya is different 
categories of Vritya. And Mother Yasoda is topmost in that category. Now, therefore, Krishna doesn't necessarily, or not even necessarily, but even regularly put himself under the control of his devotee, unless his devotee has pure, unalloyed love. Sometimes we, what is that pure, unalloyed love? Mm -hmm. It's not easy to describe that because it's an experience. And to try to analyze pure, unalloyed love, there are verses that kind of illustrate some of the principles. A pure, unalloyed love really is something that is uh, not put into words. It's a position, we'll try to say something in that regard, it's a position where one loses complete sense of oneself and is simply focused on Krishna. That's it. One does not even exist for oneself. Although we exist, our consciousness is not at all, at all on anything that we are or do. What is it about? It's all about Krishna. And what is that all about? That means how to make Krishna happy or how to act in such a way that the activities fulfill the desires of Krishna. In other words, Krishna wants to do something. The devotee arranges things in such a way that Krishna can perform the activity. Now, Krishna doesn't need anyone to arrange anything for him because he is Ishwar. He is the supreme controller. And that means there is nothing outside of his control. But in his different leelas, especially in his Vrindavan leela, he is somewhat deficient in doing things <laughs> because he plays the role, not plays the role, is in the role of an apparently a person who has faults, who makes mistakes, who um, acts in the apparently wrong way. But that's not possible for Krishna. Because from the material perspective, there are right and wrong, but Krishna is not in the material realm. He's transcendental, he's on the pure spiritual platform. So what is right and wrong material when we see Krishna performing activities within the relationship with his devotees acting in a subordinate role, doesn't apply to Krishna ultimately, but in his mood of Madhurya, sweetness, he becomes captivated, he becomes chastised, he becomes uh, restricted. Um, he is given things, and when he's given things, he responds in a way that he's pleased to receive it. So all these things, are also are the ordinary activities of people in the material world. But when Krishna performs these things, he is not ordinary. He is in his transcendental position of enjoying loving relationships with his devotees. And the devotees find only how to make Krishna happy. <laughs> Well, what pleases Krishna? Or what can I do? Now, once, there, once there's a relationship established, in other words, say Mother Yasoda, she has a relationship with Krishna. She's his mother and he's the son, and she's responsible to make sure he gets everything he needs to grow up as a very nice boy. <laughs> now, that's her focus. The relationship has already been established. Same with the cowherd boys. Some of the cowherd boys have been with Krishna for so long and they've played many games with Krishna. So they know what it's like to play with Krishna. 
and they they have established a relationship with Krishna. So whatever they say and do in that relationship is an enhancement of the relationship with Krishna based on the based on the nature of the relationship, which is in that case friendship. So they might joke together, they might criticize each other, they might uh, play tricks on each other, they may uh, uh, act in ways that are what ordinary friends do. But Krishna loves that because it's all done simply in the mood of pleasing Krishna. And the same with any of the other rasas. So we see now these other personalities in the comparison field here, like Lord Rama, Lord Shiva, like that, they are powerful demigods who control or have the service of controlling a particular aspect of the material energy. And they're given that position by their austerity and by their devotion. But they are not in the mood of Vrindavan. So they can never be equal to Mother Yasoda on another level. Now you might say from the intelligent point of view, or not even say an intelligent, the point of view of relationship, Mother Yasoda is just a simple village lady. And uh, these big controllers, they have uh, big positions, they have mystic power, uh, they can go from one place to another instantly. It doesn't matter how far the distance is. They can, uh, they can make themselves invisible. They have so many tremendous powers, but they don't have the same relationship nor the same loving relationship as Mother Yasoda has. Her relationship is in intimate. It's so intimate that she can chastise Krishna and no one can chastise the Supreme Personality of God. <laughs> He's above all chastising because whatever he does is perfect and therefore no one can take fault with him. Sometimes we think on this level, people question why God has allowed something to happen or why God made something happen, such as maybe a calamity befalls upon a particular person. And then why didn't Krishna stop that calamity or why did Krishna even uh, facilitate that calamity? And so he's, he's above you know, suspicion, he's above criticism, he's above correction. But in the Vrindavan mood, He's always being corrected. <laughs> He's being chastised. He's being, uh, you know, uh, his mother wants to call him for lunch. He doesn't come for lunch. She gets upset, sends someone to look for him. And that person comes back and says, he, he doesn't want to come and wants to play. She gets more angry and goes out herself looking for him. Krishna sees his mother looking for him. She, he hides so she can't find him. <laughs> the guy, God hides from his mother. He gets tied up from his mother. We can't imagine, nor even begin to imagine, what is the position of Mother Yasoda in relationship to the Supreme Personality of God. Now, he's playing the role as a little child, but he is the all power within existence. He is the force that makes everything come about. He moves everything to its next stage and he is the force that makes everything disappear. He's in the heart of all living entities. He's in the, within the atom, he's between the atom. There is nothing outside of his power, but still, he runs from his mother, he gets tied up, he gets chastised. Such love 
or such position of Mother Yasoda is so exalted that the great controllers such as Brahma, Shiva, Indra, they offer prayers to Mother Yasoda, begging just a slight drop of her bhakti to fall upon them. That's how exalted she is. Uh, go back to the beginning of the verse here. Um, when some, as Prabhupada mentions a particular point that it should be noted, devotees should be aware of this point because it's very important in our Krishna consciousness. And the uh, explanation is that when something is said three times, such as the example here, when you say, do it, do it, do it, means that there's great stress. Or sometimes we say, there is no other consideration. Just like when we say, Harir Nama, Harir Nama, Harir Nama, Eva Keva Lum, Cologne Nasti Eva, Nasti Eva, Nasti Eva. That verse illustrates this particular literary emphasis. And what is that? The holy name, the holy name, the holy name. There's no other way, no other way, no other way. That verse is the epitome or the ideal example of this emphasis on thrice. Okay. And so we see that here, neither Brahma, nor Shiva, nor the goddess of fortune can get, can obtain what Mother Yasoda got in her uh, relationship with Krishna. She is so exalted. Mm -hmm. So this is particularly in this point here. So we pray to Mother Yasoda, please, Mataji, give us a small drop of a drop of a drop of the bhakti that you have for the Supreme Personality of Godhead who has appeared as your son. Just give us just a little bit of that mercy, and then our life will be perfect. We will be extremely blessed, and we will attain the lotus feet of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So you see, uh, devotional service, although it's described in different stages, all the way up to prema, and in the different within the stages, there are different levels also. For instance, in Sadhana Bhakti, there are two levels. In Baba Bhakti, there are six levels. And in Prema Bhakti, there are eight levels. So as the levels increase within the categories, the intensity of the devotion also increases. And in the category of Prema, when one gets to the highest level of Prema, which is seeing Krishna face to face, just like Prabhupada said, I'm seeing you and you're seeing me. You can see Krishna in this. That is available on the highest stage of prema. But within that relationship of seeing Krishna face to face, there are also unlimited levels of greater devotional that's manifested. Why? Because bhakti doesn't reach an end it is unlimited as krishna is unlimited as the spiritual energy is unlimited as the internal energy of the bhakti flow is unlimited and so all of these aspects are unlimited so the love of a devotee is unlimited just like we might compare uh, who is the who is given the greatest devotee position? I mean, that is sometimes given to 
from Srimati Radharani. Although she's the internal energy of the Lord, she's non different than the Lord. Sometimes it says that her bhakti is super excellent, a superlative. And there is nothing greater. And that is actually correct in the absolute sense. But you see, then when we come down to the level of those who are not in the category of the internal energy, we find that there is one great personality, his name is um, Madhavendrapuri. And Madhavendrapuri is given the position that uh, the quality of the highest expression of love is called Mahabhava. And in that stage, it says that there's only three people who have attained that stage of Mahabhava. And that is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Srimati Radharani, and Madhavendra Puri. So we can we get a little glimpse of the different levels of devotional affection that is exhibited towards Krishna. Mm -hmm. If we can just somehow or other come to the stage of being attracted to Krishna in such a way that we lose our attraction for this material world, then we have attained a great elevated stage of bhakti. In our devotional service, we may have some attraction for Krishna, but we're still attracted to this material world. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was uh, uh, glorified by one personality, uh, his personality said to Mahaprabhu, oh, Oh, uh, Lord Chaitanya, you have so much devotion to Krishna. You are the best devotee. You have so much love for Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu responded in a very interesting way. He said, if I had, if I had any love for Krishna, why am I still breathing? Why am I still eating? Why am I still trying to maintain this body? If I had any love for Krishna, I wouldn't be doing any of this. <laughs> so he wanted to give us a little bit of a clear understanding. Of course, we can't imitate that, nor should we imitate it. But the idea is that in these pastimes of Krishna, we're, we're getting attracted to not only to Krishna, but to Krishna's pure devotees who are attracted to Krishna. If you get attracted to one who is attracted, that is a great achievement. And that is understood only when we lose our attraction for this material world. Uh, how much are we attracted to the material world? We don't really know because we might think within the purview of our own experiences, we don't find so much attraction or even we may even be free from all of the attractions within our experience. But then again, if something else comes by way of circumstance, which is much greater in its attracting force on the material level, then what is our position? Uh, just like I don't know how to use an example um, I'm thinking of a particular example we had the example of Lord Shiva when Lord Shiva heard about the incarnation of Moh Mohini Murti who attracted the demons in such a way that they gave up the nectar and gave it to the demigods Lord Shiva went to Lord Vishnu and said he wanted to see that expansion of Krishna known as Mahini Murti. Lord Krishna didn't want to show it to Lord Shiva. <laughs> he said, um, you don't want to see this. <laughs> no, no, Shiva was insistent and he had all his arguments. 
So the Lord smiled. And then the next minute he manifested that form of Mohini Murti. And when Lord Shiva saw that form, he became so attracted. He is Vaishnava Gita Shambhu. He is, he is the most dear of all personalities. He cannot be attracted by anything in this material world. But, and he's fixed, just like it says that uh, Parvati, when she was a little girl, she worshipped Shiva Linga so much so that Shiva was not at all disturbed of being worshipped in his Linga. And he was completely Dira. Now Krishna manifests himself as Mohini Murti. He sees this form of the, of the Lord and he's completely overwhelmed with attraction. So much so that he goes after this form to take advantage. Mohini Murti starts going and Lord Shiva is chasing. Lord Shiva is running and Mohini Murti as Krishna is hiding in different places, appearing and disappearing just to attract Lord Shiva. And Lord Sh and there's one quite humorous part of this Leela where many of the disciples or followers of Lord Shiva were sitting together and they look up and they see this lady running and then they see their worshipful Lord Shiva chasing after this lady. <laughs> the disciples saw their guru chasing after this beautiful lady. And of course, at one point, he lost his potency and then he came to his senses. <laughs> so uh, this material energy is very bewildering. And the form of the opposite sex is the most bewildering of all manifestations of the external energy. And so no one should think, well, I don't have any attraction for this material world. Everyone should think, I have so much attraction to this material world and I'm simply praying to Krishna, please break my attraction so I don't fall into this material idea that there is some happiness in this material world. And so this is an indication of uh, the beginning of bhakti. Well, when you hear about great personality, such as Mother Yasoda, it's not possible, nor is it within the range of anyone's intelligence or ability to understand the nature of the bhakti of Mother Yasoda, who is running in the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj and being chased by his mother. <laughs> Okay, so this is a little bit about this particular verse. It's quite uh, multifaceted. There are many angles you can look at this particular verse, and you'll see how Srila Prabhupada explains it in different ways. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for the wonderful talk on this um, topic. And this was, um, and would you want me to summarize the class or uh, can we straightly go to the uh, question and answers? Yeah, so yeah, the, the service of the host is give a quick summary and then present that summary to the audience and open it up for questions. Quick yeah. summary means one or two sentences. That's pretty much it. Yeah, sure, Guru Maharaj. Um, uh, so basically, um, 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 I noticed three points we discussed. <laughs> First was the pure unalloyed devotion and what is pure unalloyed love is uh, and uh, how, how was the relationship between Mother Yashoda and Krishna. And then we discussed that why the demigods cannot achieve that type of relationship or that type of exalted position <clears throat> uh, which Mother Yashoda had. And then Guru Maharaj discussed um, uh, talk about the 
different levels of sadhana bhakti, uh, bhava bhakti, and uh, prema bhakti. Um, sorry, Guru <coughs> um, uh, Different levels of prema bhakti and um, position of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <coughs> And uh, uh, what three devotees mainly have achieved the Mahabhav, which was uh, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Shri Radharani, and Madhvendra Puri. Uh, then Guru Maharaj also talked about uh, in this verse, there was, you know, three times Na has been mentioned. So, how much importance has been given that no one can achieve the uh, position what uh, Mother Yashoda had achieved. And uh, the ending of the class was um, the pastimes of, pastime of um, uh, Lord Shiva and uh, Mohini Murthy as in how Lord Shiva got attracted to uh, Krishna's incarnation as Mohini Murthy. So, uh, so this is the quick summary of um, uh, what uh, Guru Maharaj has um, uh, talked about today. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, comments, realizations, <coughs> uh, please unmute yourself and ask, or you can um, you know, type in the chat box and I can read it for you. Thank you. Any questions? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances of Rosh Tashil Prabhupada. Um, Guru Maharaj, um, I couldn't understand uh, this point of uh, uh, where Srila Prabhupada is mentioning that um, when anything is uttered three times, do it, do it, do it. One should understand that uh, this is meant to indicate grace on a fact. But um, so how, um, um, uh, can you just explain it more, a uh, little bit more about this Guru Maharaj? So um, here, the, here uh, in these words, um, the negative pronouncements are given like na, na, na. So which is like no. Uh, so, but um, how do we understand that uh, uh, this point, Guru Maharaj? Yeah, mm, well, that's that's a principle of, of uh, uh, literature that when you when you hear something three times that means it's an absolute truth or an absolute absolute uh, indication for instance Prabhupada would say uh, a mother is trying to control the child so she says do this do this do this so in using that as an example, then there's no other consideration. And we use the example of the verse, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama. So the Acharyas uh, give some uh, explanation saying, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam means no other way, not by karma, no other way, not by gyan, no other way, only by bhakti. So it's a it's a point of emphasis, that's all. So as and can, as, can be applied to a positive or a negative. Yeah. So as per this verse, uh, so here uh, um, it says that neither Lord Brahma nor Lord Shiva nor even the goddess of fortune. So no. So, um, so to mention about them, uh, this word is used. Right, good much. Yeah, that's what's that's what it's indicating. Na libere, libere. Libere. Yeah. That's good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, I want to ask you in this um, uh, one question, is this uh, in the last paragraph when it's mentioned Vimukti, and that is a special Mukti. So it, it does the special Mukti doesn't come in the uh, different five types of, uh, you know, liberation, which has been listed here, that is Sarijya, Salokya, Sarupya, and Shrasti, and Samipya. So 
is basically it's outside the liberation. It's not a liberation. It's uh, it's something else. Let's see the let's see the uh, text again. Yes, Guru Maharaj. <clears throat> so in the, this one here. <clears throat> if there are different types of liberation, but mukti means special mukti. When after liberation, one is situated on the platform of Prema Bhakti, one is said to achieve the mukti. There it is. Because mukti is included in bhakti. But that mukti that's included in bhakti is special mukti. It's called the mukti. Uh, so, this, so this is not a liberation, basically. It's, it's a beyond liberation. That's what it says here. When after liberation, one is situated on the platform of prema bhakti, one is said to have achieved vimukti. Okay. Sure. So basically, on this it's on no, the sorry, platform sorry. of prema bhakti. Yeah. Okay. So because of somewhere, Guru Maharaj, I've heard that samipe it means samipe it means you get the association of the Lord, uh, and uh, like what we see in the. <coughs> In the um, uh, the uh, you know Brajvasis, they also had the association of the Lord. So would that be different than uh, is different than what? Different than special because uh, I feel like whoever was in Vrindavan in Krishna's pastime, they also had you know uh, um, they also yes. in prema bhakti basically. Yeah. Yeah, if they're in Krishna's leelas, yeah, they're on the plate from a frame of Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. You can't get that stage unless you are on that. You can't get that association. I mean, some demons have gotten it, but it's not in the same way. Demons don't get prema because their their consciousness is unfavorable although they may have the association of the lord it's still unfavorable thank you anyone else mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, then for now, Gurmash, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you. Thank you, Gurmash. Very nice class. So, I have a question. Like, uh, like Mother Yashoda, uh, I just had this question like um, to understand the, the bhakti of uh, Mother Yashoda. I mean, we need to be very at a higher level of spiritual. So, uh, maybe I'm very neophyte. I'm not able to understand it and uh, thing. But uh, Guru Maharaj, just my understanding, like you know, Mother Yashoda, she is very simple, covered woman, and uh, her uh, she is completely engrossed in serving and taking care of the little Krishna. So, but just like in the modern, uh, like in the Kaliuga, we really see like uh, woman is. Uh, <clears throat> challenged with uh, so many things like even though she wants to live like a simple um, life uh, I mean uh, just uh, because uh, she's put in a very challengeable situations it's very difficult um, uh, find uh, to follow the footsteps you know uh, so Guru Maharaj can you please uh, enlighten or a little bit explain what is the question um, sorry, uh, Gurmash. My question is like uh, Mother Yashoda, she's very simple, covered woman. Uh, she's completely engrossed in taking care of uh, uh, little Krishna. But uh, just to follow the footsteps of Mother Yashoda, like in the Kaliuka, um, like uh, the woman is challenged with so many situations. I mean, uh, even though she wants to live a simple life, um, she is not able to because uh, of the situations and the environment in the Kaliuka. So how can we actually like, uh, so the change should be like, you know, it should come uh, through like, uh, 
the it, it should happen like uh, everywhere how should we handle this uh, like You just accept it. What can you say? <laughs> yeah, so this is Mother Yasoda. You can pray to Mother Yasoda, you glorify Mother Yasoda, you hear about Mother Yasoda, you speak about Mother Yasoda. By doing that, you get a you develop some attraction for Mother Yasoda. And then if you get develop that attraction, you also get her mercy. And that mercy will also inspire you in your own level of devotion. So these great personalities were meant to learn about what is bhakti from them by studying carefully, hearing about them, understanding the nature of that, their, their service to Krishna. Mm -hmm. When we do that, then we learn what is bhakti. We may perform bhakti in our own way, but we can only, when we see, when we hear about these great personalities and how they serve the Lord, with complete attention and devotion, then we want to investigate deeper. What is the nature of that? Where does it come from? How is it exhibited? Okay. So uh, we don't have to make a study of each and every great personality, but we can choose so one or two of them and learn more deeper about their nature. Someone who you find attractive to you, you can focus on that person and learn more about that. So just uh, constant hearing and just an effort and uh, maybe that will... Find, yeah, find that person that you are attracted the most to, who is a great, who is a pure devotee of Krishna and make mm -hmm. that person your a focus in your devotional service. That could also be a pure devotee spiritual master, or it could be an eternal associate of Krishna in the spiritual world. Thank you very much. Yeah. You, see, you see these little kids, they run around, they, they have little clubs in their hands, and they, got, they have Hanuman t-shirts on, and they say, I'm Hanuman, I like mm -hmm. Hanuman. Um, I only want Hanuman. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, kids pick up on, you know, maybe a personality like Hanuman or who else? Or maybe they like Lord Vishringadev. <laughs> mm. So we should do the same with certain personalities that develop, we develop attraction for. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have attraction for anybody, just keep hearing in a general sense until you, until that attraction awakens. Mm -hmm. And um, good much, it should happen naturally or we should put an effort for it? Like uh... You have to put an effort, but it will happen through your effort and through Krishna's mercy. Okay. <clears throat> okay, good much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, Guru Maharaj, she mentioned like a pure and alloyed uh, love. It's an experience uh, and you have some verses that you can refer and read it. Uh, can you please tell me, Guru Maharaj, like verses where I can... So many verses in the Shastras. Savai pum sankaro dharma yato bhakti ahog sajaya hoiti ki apriyata yayapa suprasiguti Ayabila Sita Sunya Gyana Kamara and Avatam Anakulena Krishna Sinanam Bhakti Uttamam. These are two of the main verses that describe pure devotional service. And then there are others that give analogies describing the comparison between what is devotion and what is pure devotion. Uh, the Sastras and Chaitanya Charitamrita is full of verses like that. Mm -hmm. There's so many verses mm -hmm. okay, describing the different symptoms of different great souls when they engage in devotional service. Those symptoms manifest in certain ways. These are all indications 
of great devotees who have developed pure love for Krishna. <laughs> Bhishma Dev, when he's on the battlefield and he's full of arrows, he has the power to leave whenever he can. But he has so much love for, for Krishna that he wants to serve Krishna even in that situation where he's under the, under the uh, under tremendous amount of pain from the arrows that are piercing his body, but he's still giving instructions to Uyudhisthira despite that, just, to, just so Krishna will, Krishna asks Bhishma to instruct Yudhisthira. And Bhishma, you know, forgot about all of his own suffering. And so that's another example, pure love. We have very many great souls who have developed pure love, the Mahajans, like the Prahlad Maharaj, who never had any enmity against his father, but was always being harassed by his father. He was simply absorbed in love of Krishna. And none of these things disturbed him. Well, you have so many examples in the there's verses that complement their experiences throughout the different leelas. <clears throat> yes, Guru Mahesh, definitely. I think by reading the, the um, thing, we get some motivation. So we can apply a few things in our day-to-day -day personal lives and uh, we can improve our bhakti. Yeah. Keep hearing, keep reading. Yes. Yes. And then speak about it too. If you don't speak about it, it won't manifest. It won't come. It won't come to the conscious level. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can speak about it to your children. You can speak about it to your husband. You can speak mm -hmm. about it to Shama Glory. Mm -hmm. It's good. You can speak about this. So you have a nice group down there. So many devotees, they come together. Yes, Guru Maharaj. We have all the celebrations, everything, something or the other we have. Yeah. Speak, speak about these great personalities. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Sure. I just have one Very question, easy. Guru. Um, <clears throat> I think last... Uh, um, not yesterday, day before yesterday, mentioned about like uh, um, eligibility, the difference between eligibility and qualification. Everyone is eligible to um, uh, do chanting and to do bhakti and uh, qualification, um, I couldn't understand. So qualification is like, okay, you're even after hearing, you're not doing a good chanting. That means you're not qualified. Like how should uh, we understand that? Like. Uh, Easy. That means you just gave the answer you know, yourself. You just gave the answer. So okay, so we are not qualified. So that means we should not do chanting. Or how? Like, el uh, no, the eligibility is always there. Qualification comes by by purifying the chanting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes uh, we get that feeling like even after being so many years and not uh, really doing good chanting and not. Uh, uh, thing so that oh, means you won't, you won't you won't taste love of God. You may not even taste the basic happiness that comes from chanting. So in order to do that, you have to qualify yourself by freeing yourself from material attachments and all offenses. When we get rid of material attachments and when we stop committing offenses, then we'll, then the qualifications manifest automatically. Okay. It's a process. It's not a mechanical process. It's a spiritual process. Thank you very much. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Very Krishna. Thank you, Sudha Mataji. Uh, we have only three minutes left. If there is any last uh, one or two questions, we can take maybe. Yes, Raj Prabhu, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. All glories to all the devotees assembled.
Marge, I have a question on the, the, the matter you were just talking about, where we find someone that we feel that we, we can uh, connect with and we can pray to them and we can learn about them uh, and learn and advance. Well, I personally, I find that I feel I can pray since I, I get I can pray sincerely to the mother gopis every day, but I'm reluctant to read too much about them uh, because I'm not so advanced and and it might not be a good thing. Yeah, well, don't read about the amorous pastimes, but you can still hear about the gopis. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, there you go. That's good, that answers my question. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, Mother Srimati. So I have an announcement um, on Sunday. Okay, this coming Sunday, November 14th, at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's correct. Uh, 6 p.m. Uh, I think that at 6 p.m. is uh, UK time or uh, Greenwich Mean Time, GMT. Mm -hmm. And at 10.30 p.m., Indian Standard Time. Uh, I did an interview with uh, Nam Ras on his podcast. It's That's called good. The Late Morning Program with Nam Ras. And it'll be broadcast live. It'll be broadcast at these times. I'll send you the, uh, what is it? The, the uh, advertisement. Yeah, you, um, can, you can post it. Yes, good match. It's uh, Radha Bhakti Mataji. She already posted in the group. Um, we already have that good match. Okay, so on that day, I won't be doing um, a another one. Yes, so the devotees can tune into that. Yeah, sure. Good match. Well, that'll be the only thing on that day. <clears throat> yeah, and the poster looks very attractive, and the topic is also very uh, attractive topic, like. Uh, New Jersey boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's Nam Ras's idea. <laughs> anyway, it's a, it's. I think it lasts. Uh, unless he he edited, I don't know how much he edited, but it lasts almost two hours. Yes, good match. Sure. Okay, so I, you have the poster, right? Yes, good match. I have the poster. Okay, so announced that there will be no other program on that day except this. Yes, correct. And uh, I'm going to um, just announce uh, about tomorrow's uh, class, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Dimple Mataji shared that uh, we have changed the timing of uh, tomorrow's class and the uh, three part series of Demons of Rindavan from mm -hmm. School of Bhakti. Um, now that the new time is at 12 30 p.m. UK time and 7 30 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. Correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I was forced to change the time because of my schedule. Okay. I hope it works for the devotees. Yeah. Dear devotees, please note that uh, tomorrow's class will be at 12.30 uh, p.m. UK time and uh, uh, it will be 7.30 a.m. Eastern and 6.30 a.m. Central. Thanks. And uh, uh, 12, 1.30 p.m. for the for European time. European time, yes, good match. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll see everyone tomorrow for Demons of the Valley. Yes, good match. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank, Thank you. you. My licenses to all the devotees. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nitai Nataraj. And uh, where's our host there? Satyabama. Yes, Thank you. Man.
Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you to all the devotees.